Hey guys, it's Misty Buck here, president of Miss Inc. And I am super excited to welcome you to another Marketing Monday. Today's very special guest is none other than my very, very dear friend, Flavia Birdie. She is the owner, founder, president, extraordinaire woman in charge over at Equipaz Pet Services. And they do so many things from A to Z to help your pets. They have helped me out for many, many years. We were friends before that, but um, she they really do a phenomenal job. A lot of you out there are probably familiar with her. So Flavia is going to talk to us today a little bit about um, her story with getting started with Ecropaws and how she's grown it over the years, what marketing tools that she has and how that might be able to help you guys out. So let's go ahead and get started. Flavia, why don't you introduce yourself? Thank you. Thank you, Misty. It's such an honor to be here with you. Um, yes, my name is Flavia Berti. I'm the owner of Equipaz Pet Services, and we uh, I founded this in 2011. My sister came on board, Frankie, and then my fiance as well. So it is a family-owned business, and we're super proud of that. Um, we are bonded and insured, which is super important for everybody to know when you're hiring a pet sitter to make sure that they're bonded and insured. What we do, well, we take care of your pets when you can't. So that's when you're working, that's when you're traveling. Um, uh, when your pet just needs you know, some exercise. Uh, so we do pet sitting, dog walking, dog running for the more active dog. Um, we also have a new service, which is our home health service, which um, we help pet parents when they really can't um, do a consistent job of what the vet recommends. So we work together with the veterinarians to provide medical care, um, like sub-Q fluids um, or injections or pilling your cat. How difficult is that for some of us? So um, we do that kind of stuff. And the other thing is, is that we're here to be a resource for you, um, our community, our pet parent community. So any needs that you may have, we're there to kind of help you. If we don't know the answers, we'll help you get them. Yeah, well, that was a pretty good, succinct explanation of what it is that you guys do. So you guys started many years ago. Yes. What were um, some of the first things that you guys did in, in that marketing plan? So when you were starting, you were starting, I think it was out of your house, right? You started oh, with like maybe a handful of pets. Before. Like four, yep. Yeah, you even had like a different name, I think, at the time for yeah, the business. And you, Yeah, and so you've really like grown oh, and in, over the years to – and like any business, right? You adapt, you expand, you modify, you especially, and this year you've done a lot, like you introduced yeah. that new service. So talk to us about um, um, how what, what marketing tools along the way that you have found to be effective. Sure, so I think like from the beginning, I mean, we were really involved in dog rescue and that's really how we, we got um, our foot in the door with this because we just realized like there's so many people that really need help and believe it or not, people don't know what pet sitting is, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Um, it was about first about educating. So um, my sister really helped me a lot, Frankie, with that um, a lot on social media, posting or simply just being out in the community and doing events. For me, events have been key. Um, that's where people have seen us most. And that's mm -hmm. where we've been able to actually educate pet parents a lot. So I think at the beginning, it was a lot of like Facebook. Right. What, what we're doing out there it was like there wasn't I don't remember Instagram until like much later right. for, yeah, for it wasn't some as reason. Popular. I mean, maybe it, it wasn't as popular, but um, a lot of Facebook, a lot of um, networking so much networking for me being out there with the the rescues being out there in chambers being out there in different community events pause for you helping them mm -hmm. you know creating events helping them with events so i think that's just it's just being out in the community being seen right what really helped us and you guys actually you actually just had an event this weekend didn't you oh yeah we did it was so fun we actually had um, our first pack walk of the season um we usually do two weekends a month we'll do pack walks so um last season was out of Brickle and out of South Miami and uh -huh. this this season we're going to do out of South Miami and out of Cocoa like the Cocoa Coconut Grove area oh nice so it'll be really nice I'm super excited about that and we just had about 20 to 20 or 22 dogs um over the weekend plus they're humans and it uh -huh. was wonderful because everybody was super respectful everybody uh -huh. wore their mask everybody was socially distant you can check us out on um, our Facebook page and our Instagram as well uh, you can see how everybody's just having a really nice time and I think right. people were just really ready to go out there and and be with other people and the dogs are excited right um, and then after we had a really wonderful um, time at coffee talk in South Miami because we're about supporting local businesses right um, and he's new to the area so um, we had some coffee after and some people stayed for, for brunch, and then we all went on our way, and we're planning on doing it again. You know, I think it's the first weekend in December we're gonna be doing it mm -hmm. out of South Miami. Mm -hmm. We used to meet at town, we miss them tons. Um, I know, such a bummer. I know, 
because they were they were so supportive always mm -hmm. um and then the probably the second weekend uh the second sunday will be out of Co uh, coconut grove and we're gonna see if we're gonna go by like the, the glass and vine area and just oh, go through coconut beautiful. grove mm -hmm. through the beautiful you know uh, like shaded area because that's what we want we really want shaded area for our pets so that they don't get overheated right yeah right 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 it's super fun. i think you guys have done such a nice job i have to say of creating community within um not just your your business and your employees and you guys just gosh you guys work so well together i've personally used their services many a times um but also with with the community in general so different organizations that you're involved with things like the pack walk and then you've even created community on social media by you have like these facebook groups for pet parents right, right. so they can check in with each other they can exactly. see photos of their pets that you guys take on pet sits which i think is genius yeah. So talk, want to talk to us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so we have a, um, a Facebook group that is, it's called Miami Pet Parents. And so anybody can join there. You just have to, you know, follow our, you know, we want to make sure that it's a friendly, respectful community. So you just have to um, abide by the, the, the rules that are on there that are very simple. It's just being kind to each other. Um, so that one we feature a lot of our like events throughout, not, not only ours, but events throughout the community, which is really important because we like to support other local, local businesses. That's really important to us. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll post events there. And then for our pet parents that are part of the Equipaz family, um, we have a private community page for them just in case that they wanna you know, share anything or if they wanna um, get together with any other of our pet parents. Sometimes you know, play dates can arise from there. Right. Um, so that's a lot of fun. And yes, we definitely share all of our pictures um, like from our from our visits right. uh, on that page. So it's, it's a lot of fun. We have some great pet parents on there that are very active. Um, and then on our, on our Miami Pet Parents page also. And we have some vendors on there that, you know, we'd have, I think it's like Monday or something that they can come in and, and talk about what they do because it's important to have that resource for our pet parents so that they know exactly like different groomers in their areas or if there's, you know, the a, a dog food company that's reputable, they're mm -hmm. on there. Or even just fun things like bandanas or, I don't know, great dog toys. So we have right. all that. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And you guys send out um, communications too. So you'll send out tips and stuff in your newsletters about if you see, let's say, I think I've seen things about recalls or even yep. something about um, like maybe real quick, you can talk about foods to avoid on Thanksgiving, right? During oh the goodness. holidays. That's probably like a big thing because pet sitting really goes beyond yeah. just, oh, let me come to the house, let the dog out, feed them and, and leave, right? You, exactly. you, They really go into this extensive very detailed look at it you're i think you're all cpr certified for pets mm -hmm. right i mean it's really it's really a beautiful business um and and what you do for really caring for for the pets and it really shows that you care for the pets we do, we do. so so thanks so, so you're welcome so let's talk for a second then real quick since thanksgiving is coming up this week let's talk and the holidays what are some things that you have seen absolutely pet parents need to be aware of what do they need to avoid so I, I really anything like rich and fatty. So that's a lot of our foods, right? You want to <laughs> anything with onions, anything with like um, raisins. I mean, honestly, I I cook for my my dogs, you okay. know, and that's fine. I mean, you can give them human food. However, how I do it is um, the Winwood Dog Food Company here in South Miami. Uh -huh. I use their recipe to to make their actually tom thank you so much i know you make it for me all the time for the dogs <laughs> my, my fiance so um we'll make them food and that's okay because we know how much is in there and it's been um uh, pre-measured and it's specifically made by a veterinarian's recipe right so that's fine but when you're at a dinner table and you're feeding like all kinds of skin or fat or even mashed potato has tons of, of butter and right. sour cream and cheeses I mean things in moderation are fine but I would honestly stay away from doing like any table food unless okay. it's like a carrot you know that and don't even do that in, in, in like do it in moderation because it has too much sugar then they start gaining weight mm. so I would probably avoid all of the fatty foods all of the fatty foods. All of the fatty foods because um, they can get pancreatitis. Mm. They can get different things. They can, you know, uh, you know, they can, they can all. I'm sorry, they, they can throw up. They can get <laughs> diarrhea. I mean, so we do want to avoid those kinds of things. Yeah, definitely so. making sure to look out for those things. Um, you know, because the dogs don't know. Like they'll eat. Like my dogs will eat literally anything. I mean, sticks is like their favorite snack. I don't. Oh, it's just the way it is. So yeah. it's like you know, but it, you have to like really be. Um, be careful about be very, uh, careful. very careful about that so um, and I know like even with cats there's some plants or something this time of year there's tons I know there's lilies and I actually we have blog posts so if you guys want great resources we have talked to veterinarians we have um, 
you know, we have actually a few videos online as well. So um, we ha we're a resource for you guys. So check out our, our, our blog post on our website and you'll find a lot of um, what you can and can't feed, what plants are are good, are not good actually usually. Yeah. Because there's a lot of them and, and cats like to eat them. So, you know, you want to definitely avoid um, having them in, in your home. Yeah. And I know one of them for sure is lilies. I know there's several more, so we can get you that resource as well. Yeah. So we can share it. All right, so this is a Marketing Monday show, and I could talk about pets all day long. It is a passion of mine, animals. I love them, and I could literally just talk about them all day long. But we are here for marketing. So yes. tell us a little bit about your branding. You're wearing this beautiful lime green shirt. You have this, I love your logo. Thank you. I love your logo. I remember your, your cousin, I think, helped you come up with the name Equipause. Yes. So what? let's talk about your branding. Sure. Let's break it down. It's not just a name that you chose. It has meaning behind it. Let's talk about these things. Exactly. So it took us a while, actually to choose it and, and I'm glad that you remember yeah Nati helped us out tremendously with the whole process um, so we were thinking about coming up with a name that meant that you were bringing balance and it's not just like oh physical balance it's mm -hmm. about being there in every aspect right because they also have you know emotions and, and whatnot right. so they're beings so we wanted to make sure that we were doing something that was balanced like like a balance and I didn't want to use balanced because somebody already actually used it so we're like what what would kind of you know be, be something that's similar to that so we're like equilibrium all right well, it's kind of the same so it came mm -hmm. out and people are like oh that's like equine I'm like no it's kind of like more like you know the gym you know like you're bringing like it's j like equinox is like an okay, amazing yeah, gym like yeah, high yeah. luxury really nice I was right like, yeah so equipause like bringing balance to our friends with paws um, so that's kind of how it started um, and at the beginning actually we only used to just have the dog and people are like what is that? What do you guys not take care of cats? And we're like, yes, we do. <laughs> so a few years later, we updated our logo. Tom helped us out with that, and um, we actually haven't you ended guys up taken care cat. of like kimono dragons or something too? Like, haven't you on the occasion done we like an exotic have, pet? We have taken care of well, the most exotic. We don't have too many exotic pets. I really wish we did, but we have um, some snakes that we've taken care of. We have bearded dragons that I absolutely love. Uh -huh. that I, at some point, I will have in my life. Um, <laughs> so we've taken care of those two. We ha what do we take care of? No, we did um, sugar gliders. They're really, oh, really Oh, wow, cute. that's so oh, cool. Goodness. Yeah, and they eat like fruits and different, they have a very specific diet. So we definitely talk to pet so parents cool. about that and what exactly you want us to do for them. But yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, basically we don't do a lot of the exotics, um, but we do do a lot of cats and dogs. We've had some birds also mm -hmm. and feeding, but. That's why we had to include our kitty friends because it's such a major part of our of our uh, family. We have so many cats, yeah. wonderful cat parents, amazing cats also, and some shy ones. So yeah. yeah, and so and the green is because it's more of like that earth balance is, is like natural feeling, yeah. or is it just a color that you like? What's up with well, the green? Well, I my favorite color is green. It's always okay. been green, and that was part of it. But I also do think it's very much um, in tune with nature, and we're outside all day. You know, it's it's just a. I love our vibrant colors. So yeah, you know, I've, I have our, you know, our greens, but I've also included um, our fluorescence, like the brighter color so we can be seen out there. Right. That's really important for us. I feel like they're like, oh, I think I saw your dog walker walking. I'm like, yeah, that's us. Did you see our shirts? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was just so, going to say, actually, I was telling you, I just ran into yeah. your sister. I was working out the other day in the neighborhood and I run into your sister who's out on a on a dog walk wearing the green shirt and that's I was like oh okay yeah is. right so now anybody watching the show when you see these lime green that's shirts are around town it's probably our friends at Equipaws doing a yeah, pet sit exactly. so um, and that's actually pretty nice for the pet owners too to know that you guys can be seen and that your dog is exactly. not gonna go you know you, you can go unnoticed on these streets of Miami uh, here. especially in the streets of Miami especially so in the streets of Miami there, yeah so we love that all right so we talked a little bit about your branding we talked a little bit about your social media strategy um what else are, do you do to get your name out there i know you mentioned some community organizations you're very yes. involved yes uh Super do you want to talk about that a little bit sure sure so i there are two main um organizations in the pet sitting world and one of them is the national association of professional pet sitters yes i sat on their board for a couple of years which was really great because i learned a lot and we actually you know put out some really great um um, webinars on for our pet setters in the in the organization to to learn how to really have those basics and and protocols for how to start a pet sitting business mm -hmm. and also you know best practices because it's really important so that was fun and then I'm also part of the um, pro, um, pet sitters international so okay. one of them is a nonprofit and one of them is for profit so okay. I, I'm on both um, I'm also part of the Coral Gables Chamber of Commerce which I absolutely love I've become a lot more involved there we did over the over over summer I guess over COVID we did <laughs> I know <laughs> who, who even knows hour. what day it I don't is even know when it was nobody knows it was fun we did a yappy hour for the chamber and I'm also the Women Business Network 
um, committee chairwoman. Yes, Very I did hear a rumor about that. So you're now the chairwoman. Yeah, for that. For so, that committee, which is amazing. How's that going? It's going well. It's going well. It's my first time chairing um, a committee like this. I love it. It's a huge responsibility. I yeah. love what we do. It's about, you know, it's not only for women. I mean, I, we want the men to come out to our events. So please <laughs> join us when you see us out there. Um, you are very welcome to join. Um, so that's been great. Um, it, it's been an experience. I'm, I'm kind of shy on camera and stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is really big for me to be out there monthly in front of the, the chamber community talking about what we're doing and, and really being the host for the event. So that's great. I, right. I'm enjoying that. And I'm also a chamber ambassador, which is another thing. Oh, it's wow. Like meeting and networking with people and making sure that they're comfortable with the chamber and if right. they um, um, need anything. So that's a lot of that's a lot of great um, time for me to network with people that are coming into the chamber, teaching them about the chamber, but right. also about what we do, because you never know if they they if have, they have any the friends, need for your service. And even they may have friends. If they don't right. have a need, they know of somebody that may have a need. Right. And then the other one that I'm part of, which I'm it's super dear to my heart, is the Rotary Club of South Miami. Oh, yes. You're very, very involved super in Rotary. You guys yeah. really do so many things in the community. You guys not know that South, South Miami Art Festival. Yes. That's them. That's us. I'm part of that <laughs> so committee. There's a couple of them, but one of them yes, is theirs. Yes, yes, <laughs> We're a really nice committee. Um, and we're, we're, we're not having it this year, unfortunately. But uh, it's the right thing to do, of right. course. But we're usually involved in the the um, the organization, the setup. I mean, we do a lot. We do marketing for them. It's we're part a, of the marketing incredible. committee for that. Yeah. And then, of course, as Equipaz Pet Services, we do the um, the the doggy hydration station, which, which I is love. Awesome. You, yeah. they have like they had like a ball pit, and they had like yeah. these things where you can stick your dog's paw in like non toxic paint exactly. and big like prints They're of doing it. They're art too. So it's an smart. art festival. I know, but it's so it's just so smart. It's just yeah. such because people love interacting with their pets. They love yeah. doing things with their pets, getting they them involved. Do. They do, and so that has to be so fun. Yeah more activities the better so the ball pit's always a success because we have we throw treats in there and the dogs go crazy they jump in people love like the the photo <laughs> opportunity and then it just gives their dogs a time to come under the shade as well because it can get really hot in miami so um that's their time to come out of the out of the sun in miami yeah and like cool off with yep, you guys a little cool bit off. all right so it's let's awesome. talk about again with marketing so over the years if you had to name your top let's say three um referral sources yeah. your leads what are your top three so I sources i feel like the most important one of course is word of mouth of course for okay. everybody right that's yes. the one that you know people like you you've tried our services you know if you refer us that's like a solid lead um i feel that through our events being there over and over again mm -hmm. that the thing is being there being present that's the most important thing mm -hmm. and they'll sign up for our newsletters and then we'll get clients that way and the other one i feel is there's there's a lot of people coming from instagram that okay. they've been following us and fo looking at our pictures right. and looking at our events and what we're doing and they're like you know what i'm going to use their services so right. that's been really important i feel yeah and guys this is why it's so important to know your audience and make sure that you're posting content to your audience so number one they are, their strategy is really smart. They're posting content that engages their existing clients by posting photos of their pets, right? Exactly. That they're already sitting with. But then it's also engaging people who might be interested in a service like that because number one, they're interested in pets. So you get to follow this page, look at really cute pets all day, yes. right? All, all over their feed. I mean, I, that's one of the reasons <laughs> I follow you guys. I'm like, oh, look at that guy. I know. So oh, I'm such a sucker for that. I follow like every adoption agency, every exactly. rescue in Miami. It's, it's like exactly. a thing. So anyway, so I think knowing your audience and, and, and knowing that, but then also people are, you're, it's so smart because they're watching what it is that you're doing and they see the care that you're giving these dogs. Exactly. And so it, it's, it's, we call that social proof, right? right. So it's another level of, um, of getting people to, to buy in and to know. So yeah. that's, so I love that. All right, so you yeah, have so word of mouth events and then you would say Instagram yeah, or your like top Instagram three. Instagram or, I mean, yeah, cause I feel like people are more watching us on Instagram these days than Facebook. So, yeah, 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 I would agree. Um, all right. And then let's say, OK, I have another marketing for question for you. And then we're going to get in a little bit about the holidays real quick. OK, okay. Mm -hmm. so I have another holiday, like all these questions, but I'm going to try not to keep you guys too long today. So but while you're here, uh -huh. what is something that you would tell if somebody's new, they're getting starting in a small, a small business, right? What is some advice that you would give them in terms of getting their creating their brand and getting it out there? Any business model. It doesn't have to be yours okay. only. Any. Yeah, I, I think it's really finding a strategy from the beginning um, because you're just 
don't just throw money out there at anything and everything because mm-hmm. it's not going to work. I mean, I, I would really say to focus on on something, you know, um, mm-hmm. a lot of times I would not a lot of times. What I would probably recommend is if you have the budget, I would hire somebody like Misty. And, and no joke, like they will <laughs> give you a strategy. They don't have to do it for you, but you can right. implement the strategy that they create for you, which is really important because if not, there's no focus. And the thing is you want to have a cohesive brand. You want to have things that look the same. Invest in, or, or if you can do it, Canva. You know, do your things on Canva, yes. which look professional. Have it have a certain look to it. And, and have that look across all your social media, um, on your website. So key is website. And even okay. if it's a landing page, like for us, people people are like, oh, where do, you, where do you have your information? I have all my information on my website. Right. You know, and have a great um, social media presence for me. Again, Instagram. And mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be crazy, just simple. So right. invest in your website, have a strategy. Um, if, you can, if you can budget for somebody like Misty, do it because it's amazing and you'll see how much they help you and you'll be focused and you'll get a lot more out of your, your social, you know, your... your your website and your social media. I think it'll look just, everything will look really nice and tight. Right, right, Mm -hmm. right. And I think you guys are doing such a nice job too, I have to say, of pivoting um, in in these challenges, challenge of a year. I think we've all had to pivot. And I would say, um, again, paying you a compliment. I know you've pivoted in your brand um, early on. Um, Mm -hmm. You started with one thing and then pivoted to what you have today. But, um, and, and just continuing to have that flexibility and offering, for instance, this new service that you talked about earlier yeah. with like the medical needs um, when my dogs were, that have since passed on, but when they were like older and now they can't see anymore, they can't hear anymore, they're having trouble walking. I mean, that's like, they're taking all these pills every day mm-hmm. and you want to be able to go do something and leave the house, but know that your pet is well taken care of. Right. I mean, that, that to me is just an incredible service that you guys, and you just introduced that this year, Thank you. right? Yeah. And we we just introduced the home health side i mean we've always done we've always recommended for like the seniors for mm-hmm. them to stay home because a lot of people in miami really well, we get a lot of calls for boarding and so let me i just kind of want to um, explain the difference between pet sitting and boarding. yes please great question and that will go into like the home health side um so pet sitting is where we as a company come into your home we send in one of our our team members um to take care of your pets in home that is great for your senior pets for pets that don't do well with other dogs or your your cat that's you know um, really difficult to get out of the house. <laughs> they just do really well at home. Right. So we come in a minimum of three times for um, our dogs, our dog clients, and right. for our cats. I mean, one time a day is wonderful. And try not to skip days. Whoever you do hire with us, we we, are, we do mandatory like every single day because we want to have eyes on them. Of course. Because they can get into trouble. Kitty cats can get into trouble. So um, <laughs> that's the pet sitting side. So you know, when you do hire a pet sitter, make sure it bonded, insured, um, and that you have a contract in place with them to know what the what everybody's responsibility is. So right. that's that. Boarding is when you take your pets outside of the home um, into either somebody's home or um, a facility. Um, and that's great for young dogs, I feel. Right. I think it's fantastic for young dogs or if you're tenting your home or certain things like that. But honestly, a lot of pets do better at home right? versus moving them out, out of um out of their environment because they like their environment they like their home they like their smells they like their their routine so right. that's always wonderful so then the home health side came about because um a lot of parents were having trouble pilling their animals you know th- mm-hmm. they, they feel sad like they don't want to inflict that that you know it's oh not, my it's god not even pain it's just if they i haven't like it. wrestled my dog to, to get them it. to put like an eye drops or to exactly. like swallow some like a medication with a syringe i mean there was exactly. like heavy things going on at one point when, with, with my dogs when they were older exactly um but yeah so i think that that's so smart that exactly. you guys offer this now yeah and i mean we're coming in we have a vet uh, a veterinary technicians that'll come in to do that so it's really somebody who's professional who has experience in that that'll come in and do it right um like the sub q fluid some people need to be taught how to do insulin so they teach you at the vet's office and we're not here to take anything from the vet's office we're here to compliment the vet's right. offices um, and we've had such great uh, great success actually um networking with them because they can't send somebody out to, to help parents at home. Some cats, they get them in the in the, the carriers. It's awful for them. Right. Some dogs, when they get older, to put them in and out of a car can be really it's difficult. Tough. They're yes. arthritic. Yes. So we talk to the veterinarians directly, get instructions from them directly. We work off of the medical orders that they have mm-hmm. to provide the service at home. So people have been really happy um, with that. And it saves pets a lot of, like, just 
Just well, it trouble. saves the pets, Pain. but it also gives you peace of mind, right? Yeah. I mean, I can't even, I'm telling you, I can't, the, the times I probably would have used that yeah. in the past, just, it's, it, it really gets tough, I think, yeah. when, they, when they have those conditions or they get older and knowing that that support is available is just everything. Yeah. So, because they, they really like your kids. They really are. They are. And actually, we're currently doing um, a bandage change. So we helped after post-surgery, this dog, oh, getting him wow. in, and, in and out of the car was too, it was just too much on, on him. He's an older dog, a 14-year-old. Uh -huh. He had a huge removal of a, of, a, of a lump in his elbow. So imagine taking him in and out of the car for that. Instead, Aww. we have Lori that's out there right now doing a, a great bandage change. And mm -hmm. everybody's super happy. The dog's happy. Mom's happy. Lori's happy doing it. Yeah. And, um, and he's not being moved around because it stresses the pets out. Right. You know, for if you have to be doing that, and, you know, a, a, um, a yearly or bi-yearly um, visit to the vet is okay. But for something like that, you're really reducing the stress for the animal. Right. And for the pet parent. Right, <laughs> which right, is right. important. Yeah, so yeah. we only have a few minutes left. So again, I could talk about this all day long, but talk to us really quickly um, about your holiday offerings. I know um, you guys fill up, you book up really quickly during we the do. holidays. Thank we God, do. right? Yes. Thank so, you. <laughs> but so <laughs> if this is something, if you're thinking of, of traveling, traveling or even just taking some time off or maybe, you know, taking a day trip somewhere yes. or what, or, you know, you just have a lot going on and you could use somebody to come in, even if you're working from home and you yes. need, man, like, you know, I know the kids are going to be off from school for a couple of weeks and maybe you're still going to be working and things are going to be extra hectic and you could use somebody to take the dog for a walk for you and just exactly. alleviate that one thing. You don't necessarily have to be going out of town to use no, your services, at all, at all. but the holidays do book up. So talk right. to us kind of just really quickly about that. Sure. So, um, so when you're traveling, we call that pet setting. When you're at home, we'll do, you know, dog walking. Um, if you are traveling, my recommendation is, is to, um, if you're going to use our services or any services really is really register with the company uh -huh. which is the most important thing the most difficult part is getting in your registration your meet and greet your you know get your keys into the hands of your pet sitter mm -hmm. um, make sure that you've met them that you've asked all the questions that they have all the information that they need to best take care of them um, and this once you do that meet and greet really you're set like you know at least for us we have your your meet and greet we ask you if there's any updates every time right we have your keys you you know you may have an emergency and you don't you know the thing is is that you don't even need to use this for the holidays you can get ready be you know have your your pet sitter uh, set up people have emergencies all the time mm -hmm. and then they don't have their pet sitter they never scheduled with us they never had their meet and greet and then we don't know what to do so we do our best to help but the best thing right. is, is to be prepared register ahead of time it's complimentary in our in our business um we'll set oh, yeah. up a yep it's a virtual meet and greet first, and then we'll do a quick walkthrough, especially since I've had to change that a little bit due to COVID. Um, right. Now we're doing the virtual meet and greets ahead of time. Right. And like a 15 minute uh, walkthrough through your home, pick up the keys and you're all set. And holidays do book up. So if you are planning to go out for the holidays, now is the time. Yeah. Um, especially for December coming up or even Thanksgiving. Yeah. I mean, you still have, you still have another day. Another, Another day. Another day. I know. We I can probably fit you in. So. <laughs> I know, yeah. But yeah. don't wait. Yeah, no. uh, so I want to say hi really quickly. We have Walter Burbrick and Mitch Panzer are here watching the show. So I just want to say hi. hello <laughs> to you guys. Um, Walter's all the way in Connecticut. So. Oh, nice. But a very hello. good friend of mine, nonetheless. Thank you for joining us. And so, all right. So we talked about all kinds of different stuff today. We were sort of a little all over the place. But um, again, I want to thank Flavio for being a guest. I think what we learned from her today is we learned a little bit about her business, but we also learned to about branding, putting thought into the meaning behind the branding, yes. um, your colors, getting out there and networking. Again, she said her top three referral sources are word of mouth, doing events, although those look a little different these days, but she's still doing them and very much involved in the community, getting that FaceTime. And then number three is Instagram and posting stuff that really knows the audience. So um, anyways, so I want to thank Flavio for being here today for a guest on Marketing Monday. I'm sure you have um, lots of doggies to get to and cats and all kinds of animals. And I'm so jealous that I have to go sit behind a computer <laughs> now when you get to play with animals. But I want to thank you for being here today. Anything that you want to say before we close out? I just want to say thank you, Misty, for having me. Um, and if you all have any questions regarding pet care, um, even if we're not, you're not in our service area, we are really happy to help you. We're happy to get you a pet sitter in your area. We're here to be a resource of the community. Um, and please join us. Join us at our pack walks. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook because we'd love to help you in any way we can. And uh, hopefully you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and a great holiday season. Yeah, so real quick, how can people reach you? You can reach us at info at 
equipazpetservices.com. You can also follow us on Instagram at um, Equipaz Pets Miami, and we're also on Facebook at Equipaz Pet Services. Ah, perfect. And we will also put that in the um, the comment section here on this video, so you guys can check that out if you're interested in reaching out to Flavia. So I want to thank you for being a guest today, and I want to thank you guys for being a guest here week after week on Marketing Monday. We will see you. I'm actually taking next week off for the holiday, but I will see you the week after for our next segment. I have another awesome guest lined up, and. I'm so grateful for you guys. I wanna thank you for being here. Anything that you need, please let us know. Any questions that you have, if there's a topic that you want us to address, let me know. And I really hope that you have a very blessed and safe holiday. I will see you soon again. Misty Buck with Miss Inc.